water molecule. I know you can't see it from where you are, but I drew with the computer two hydrogens, H2O, little black oxygen atom there. That's a water molecule right there. And water's H2O. The width of the water molecule is only 0.4 nanometers. So this, it's really important to, have, to get a sense of how big these things are in comparison to each other. And I told you again, uh, another unit of length that you want to know about as a scientist is this one. This is a nanometer, a billionth of a meter, size of a sugar molecule. If you take a tenth of a nanometer, not a thousandth, but just one more power of 10 down, that's, that's 10 to the minus 10th of a meter, and that's called an angstrom, German word, angstrom. Special unit of length and used in physics is called the angstrom or angstrom, which is one-tenth of a nanometer, or in other words, 10 to the minus 10 meter. Read this, uh, if you a can, a single hydrogen, hydrogen atom has a diameter of about one angstrom. It is the smallest atom. Right. Okay, so try to commit that to, uh, try to commit this pretty well to memory. And on my first midterm, which I showed you, you have to know this pretty well. Now that segues into this picture, which is related to it. These two kind of go together. I call it the 200,000 times model. No, you no. Well, you you need to know these. Yeah, you need to know all those. Okay. But not like how, how big a rise is on this or anything. Well, you'll see what you need to know in just a second here when we talk through this. Okay, I call this the 200,000 times model, and what I've done is I imagine that we blow things up 200,000 times. And I pick 200,000 because it turns out that if you take a typical what plant cell right here and blow it up 200,000 times, it would be about as big as this whole room here. Okay, say this out loud. If you blow up a typical plant cell 200,000 times, it'll be about as big as this whole room. Now, and everything on this picture is on that scale now, 200,000 times bigger. So here we go. How long would a typical plant cell be? Size of a large, large lecture, lecture hall or, or a lab? 60 micrometers actual. It'd be 12 meters in the model, in the 200,000 times model. How big would a typical animal, animal cell be right here? Answer, size of a minivan, like a Dodge minivan or a pickup truck. That's about how big a typical animal cell would be. They're smaller than plant cells. That's 20 micrometers actual, 4 meters in the, in the model. Okay, how big would the nucleus of both of these kinds of cells be? Answer, volume of a, a small, not a big refrigerator, kind of a small refrigerator like this, a mini fridge, basically. That's about how big the nucleus would be of both of those cells. And the DNA inside there, let's see, did I bring my, oh gosh, I forgot to bring that tie. But anyway, you know what fine sewing thread looks like? Yeah. I, took a, I took a whole spool of sewing thread with 50 meters of, or 50 yards of sewing thread, and I unwound the whole thing and just wadded it up, and it made a big wad of sewing thread about this big. Okay, that's 50 yards, half a football field of fine sewing thread, about a clump this big. And the DNA on this scale would be about like fine sewing thread, about the thickness. So DNA in this model would be 0.48 millimeters thick, or about the thickness, it may, actually more like heavy sewing thread probably. And uh, on that scale, read this, the six billion base pairs of DNA in a diploid human cell would be like 254 miles of fine sewing thread on that scale. So that's like from here to San Francisco. 
254 miles of sewing thread, and that all that DNA is packed into a nucleus this, this big, the size of a mini fridge. So it's coiled up in a very, very precise way. It's coiled up in proteins that we call nucleosomes, packed up, yes, very, very precisely. Okay, a couple more things. On this scale, how big are the chloroplasts? Those are the green things that we'll see Thursday under the microscope that make uh, sugar from sunlight in plant cells. Chloroplast on that scale would be the size of a washing machine, you know, maybe about this big. And those would be floating around inside this room-sized plant cell trying to get the light, absorb the light. The chloroplasts make sugar, the mitochondria burn the sugar to produce energy. And the mitochondria are smaller. These are like the power supplies of the cell. How big would a mitochondria be? Size of a two liter soft drink bottle, about this big. What else is about the size of a two liter soft drink bottle? Right here, a bacteria. A bacteria. Typical bacteria. And the reason is because mitochondria clearly evolve from bacteria. The evidence for that is overwhelming. This is what the chloroplasts might have too, right? Chloroplasts what? Might have evolved. Yes, the chloroplasts evolved from blue-green algae, cyanobacteria, which are also a type of, it's a photosynthetic bacteria. Right. We'll talk at great length about that. In fact, we'll talk about that Thursday, you're, and you're going to see a live blue-green algae on Thursday in the lab. Right. Three more things. We're going to make it glow. What? Are we going to make it glow? Make the bacteria glow? Not yet. No, we do that later in the semester. You have a ton of stuff to learn about DNA before we can do that. I could, I could teach you to do it. It's easy to do it, but you wouldn't understand why. So you've got to learn a lot of genetics first. Okay, remember that the ribosome is this big compared to the typical protein, this big, compared to a water molecule. How many water molecules do you think you could fit inside the volume of one ribosome? Wow, a lot, huh? And I'm guessing probably about a million. Say that, you could probably put in about a million water molecules inside the volume of one ribosome. And on that 200,000 time scale, those three things, ribosome, typical protein, and water molecule, here they are. How big would a ribosome be on the 200,000 time scale? Size of a BB shot. So inside a plant cell, you would have untold, I used to remember how many, I read once how many ribosomes there are in a plant, an animal cell. For some reason, I can never get my brain to remember that number. But anyway, it's uh, it's on the like hundreds of thousands, okay, if not a million or so. So anyway, these would be like BBs, see, floating around inside this room-sized cell, each ribosome. How big is each protein molecule? Well, much smaller than a ribosome. On that scale, good way to think about it, each protein molecule would be the size of a grain of, a salt. Grain of salt, like you put on your eggs. And that's a particularly important one to have in mind, because remember the proteins are the little machines that do everything. The motors, the motors, the pumps, the enzymes. So think of untold hundreds of millions of salt grain sized little machines doing things. Those are the proteins. But the, the is a monster. <coughs> monster it, it is a monster. It's one of the biggest uh, molecular assemblies inside of a cell. Maybe the biggest, actually. And lastly, how big would a water molecule be on that scale? And the best way that I can think of to illustrate that is if you took a, if you took a uh, mechanical pencil, like you know, I bring my mechanical pencil, well, pretend this is a sharp, sharp mechanical pencil, okay? 
And if I took this and held it like this on a piece of paper, like that, and made the tiniest imaginable speck with a sharp mechanical pencil, so small that you can <coughs> barely see it, that's roughly the size of a single water molecule. Actually, that's quite a bit bigger than a water molecule would be on that scale. But that's about, it's about the smallest thing that, that a person can make physically, so that's why I picked it. So, you have to know for midterm one all these sizes on the scale. So I'll ask, you can see it on midterm one, I'll say, how big would a ribosome be? And you have to say, what? Uh, BB shot, it's right here. They're all right here. Okay, and I'll say, how big would a typical protein molecule be? And you have to write grain of salt. Got it? You'll so. see them there on midterm one. Memorize those. That's really valuable information. Yes? Why, um, why a 200,000 times model? Well, I told you why. Because if you blow up a typical plant cell, it'd be about the size of this lecture hall, which my students can identify with easily. Uh, yeah, another question? So remember, memorizing the relative sizes versus the actual sizes? Yeah, you give me the sizes <coughs> on the 200,000 times model. That's all I care about. No nanometers or anything? No, you don't have to memorize those. Uh, yes? Um, is the plant cell able to be bigger than the animal cell because of its rigid outer structure? Or it yeah, the rigid cell wall does allow these to be bigger. Yes? One other thing, um, not that this is like, like on inspiring me, but... Um, okay, ask your question loud. Okay, the, the um, sizes described in the book for cells, their, their organelles, um, they use uh, micro, micrometers, whereas some of the stuff, I mean, obviously it's interchangeable with uh, nanometers, but is it, I mean, are we going to, like, say, oh, this... Use like micrometers for cell size, and if it's smaller, use like nanometers or put to like the. Well, the general rule is any object that you're measuring, you usually try to pick a unit of measure that'll give maybe about ten of them in that object. That's kind of the rule of thumb. I think. Let me close. Okay, so there we covered that, and next we're going to, uh... okay, I think we'll have you guys do the same thing we do in Bio 101, just get a little bit of practice measuring. We're going to do this, this finger arm uh, activity. Here's my index finger, how long is it in metrics? What would be a good unit to use? Probably centimeters, right? So it's like maybe seven centimeters or thereabouts. So on this diagram, you're going to measure using, so here we've got metric rulers. We'll put a couple of these on each desk. Okay, my finger, you're going to measure it from this crease. See the crease right here? Are you listening carefully? Yes. See the crease right there? Measure it to the fleshy tip of your finger. And mine is six point eight centimeters long, my index finger. Okay, so on this diagram, <coughs> we're going to make a correlation graph. So here, read this. Index finger length in index centimeters. Finger length in or, centimeters. Or no, I'm sorry. I miss, I miss uh, read that. 6.8 I know is not right. What am I doing here? I didn't look closely enough. My finger is 8.2. So here, 8.1, 8, 8. 8 8.2, that's my finger. Who do you think has longer fingers, women or men? Well, we'll find out. 